Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is just gonna be like a little sit down video. I'm literally just sitting on my floor right now. And this is kind of a follow up to the video that was my condo tour, my tour of this place that I'm staying right now, which is an Airbnb. And this is the video that I asked you guys if you wanted to see in that video, which was just like, my experience living in Airbnbs, living in furnished places that I am not actually renting, like a place where I don't have a lease, it's not my own apartment, that type of a thing. I'm gonna talk about all of the things. I wrote down a list of everything I wanted to cover so I wouldn't forget anything because I feel a little bit scatterbrained. I am drinking a cold brew right now so I'm kind of shaky, but I'm like, ready to film this video. I have been living in Airbnbs since the beginning of November and it is now mid-February. The reason why I personally chose to do this as opposed to just moving straight into a new lease, you know, a house or apartment or whatever it is, um, I chose to do this because I was moving to a new city, to Boise. Some of you guys have been asking me where I'm living right now. I'm living in Boise, Idaho, and I moved to a new city, and I kind of didn't know how long I was going to be staying. Like, it was, for me, I am the type of person that I want to, like, try something and see how I like it before I fully commit, especially after, in the past, I have had, you know, leases that usually last a year. A lease usually should last about 12 months. Sometimes you can do, like, shorter. It just depends on you know wherever you're staying and all that kind of jazz all the different factors but I have had you know leases in the past that were about 12 months and by the end of my lease or by certain points of my lease I really just wanted to leave and I wanted to get out of it early and I actually paid a lot of money a whole month's rent to get out of my last lease in LA early because I didn't want to stay through the end of it. Basically, I kind of tried something to avoid having to pay like a security deposit and moving costs and everything that goes with moving. Moving is extremely expensive, um, especially if you have a lot of stuff. You can definitely do it affordably if you don't have that many things, but if you're moving long distance, like I was gonna be moving, and still will be moving my things from Los Angeles to Boise, Idaho, which really isn't even that far. It's like they're both on the West Coast, but that is going to cost me at least probably $1,500 to move all of my stuff, and that is literally just the cost like to move my stuff. That is not including labor for moving, hiring movers, any of that stuff. It's just the cost to move my stuff from one city to the next city based off of you know the amount of things that I own for one person. So moving is expensive basically. And when I came here, I didn't want to move all my stuff over yet because I wasn't sure how long I was going to be here and all this kind of stuff. And my stuff is in a storage unit in Los Angeles and I was moving from Georgia. So for me, it just made sense rather than like go get my stuff and move it and pay all these expenses and sign a new lease in a city. It just made more sense for me to come with a few things. I think I came with like a suitcase or two and I basically did move, but I just just moved me and my essentials and I moved into Airbnbs which I would be renting for a week or a couple weeks or just trying out different places so some price comparisons for you as opposed to living in an Airbnb or furnished space versus living in your own apartment or house or whatever where you have a lease the basic things that I can think of that you're saving money on are no security deposit um, I have literally had to pay I think What's the most expensive security deposit I've had to pay? I think $1,000 at my last apartment. So you don't have to pay a security deposit. That's nice. Also moving costs. You're gonna have no moving costs um, most likely because you're just gonna be like traveling to this place with some luggage. You're not gonna have to move all of your things because you're already moving into a furnished space. And like I said, moving costs can really, really add up. Every time I have moved, it has been more expensive than I thought it was going to be. And I have just been like, <laughs> I hate moving. And then also you can pay as you go for as much time as you want. So you don't have to pay for, you don't have to pay every single month for 12 months. You know what I mean? It's not like you have to, when you pay rent, you have to do that at one time. But there are so many costs for first moving into a place that it is just crazy. Getting all your cleaning supplies and getting your utilities and your internet set up, like you just avoid all of those extra costs. So it's really nice for a period of time where you're kind of trying out a new city or you're traveling and you want to put your stuff in a storage unit and go travel. 
I think I'm gonna be end ending up doing that at some point put my stuff in storage and and just like not have a lease and just go and travel for like a month or two or three um and stay in airbnbs it's something that's very convenient for if you're the type of person that wants to just like put your stuff somewhere not worry about it not have to worry about paying a rent and just get out so when i got here i tried out um, maybe like two or three places before I ended up settling on a place that I rented for about two months Which was the little house that I was renting before this place I'll have a link to the tour of that house right up here if you guys haven't seen that video already because that's a pretty good um, What's the word? That's a pretty good like example of an average Airbnb um, And there's so many different types of places that you can stay and you don't have to use something exclusively like Airbnb that is just a platform that I pretty much prefer but there is Airbnb there's VRBO which I've never actually used before but it's a similar platform to Airbnb um, and then also you can go on sites like Craigslist and I don't know what country you guys live in but I think every country kind of has their own version of Craigslist which is where you can just go on and find places and look at places apartments and you can look at sublets and like temporary housing so that's something that i was looking at for a few months actually before i came here i would look at the boise page for temporary housing and for sublets and sublets and subleasing if you don't know what that is it is basically taking over the ending period of somebody's lease or if somebody goes on vacation for like two or three months and they want their house or their apartment to be rented out they can list it as a sublet and hopefully they'll be able to find somebody to rent it out for that time that they're gone and make some money off of their place while they're gone so that's kind of what a sublease is if you didn't already know that <laughs> so I think doing something like this and staying in Airbnbs is not only so essential for if you're gonna be like moving to a new city or but I think it's really essential for if you're going to be traveling I mean I rarely stay in hotels anymore if I stay in a hotel it's like there wasn't an Airbnb close enough to where I'm trying to go or something like that I will always look on Airbnb as opposed to a hotel because most of the time hotel rooms on average I find are you know at least $150, $200 a night for a popular city. Sometimes they're more than that and you can find Airbnbs for cheaper than that. I mean there definitely are you know still going to be expensive places on Airbnb and really nice places that you can stay and um, but basically you can do it affordably. This is what I would do if I was planning like a month-long trip somewhere. If I was planning on traveling abroad I would just book my stays in Airbnbs. I mean that's probably what I would decide to do. I would not stay in a bunch of hotels. I would just look on Airbnb and the various cities that I wanted to stay in and try to find places that were affordable but also places that I thought looked really fun and nice to stay. I think the top thing about staying in an Airbnb or a similar situation, you know, somebody's furnished home that they have decorated for you is basically that you stay somewhere that like i said is furnished you don't have to worry about moving all your stuff over you don't have to worry about like having basic things you have furniture you're gonna have electricity utilities um appliances and you're gonna have most most of the time you're gonna have a kitchen um airbnb will list all of these different things for you like what specific appliances and what specific you know things every place has and you can look at all these different photos of the places i go on there and i just stock a bunch of places and i look at the photos and i just try to find what i think will work best for me when you stay in a hotel room typically you are not going to have a kitchen you're not going to have a ton of space if you're staying somewhere for a night or two obviously it's like you know it doesn't really matter stay at a hotel but if you're living somewhere for like a month or two months or a long period of time like you need to have that stuff you need to have basic appliances and all that jazz so that's why i think it's so beneficial to look into places that are on airbnb vrbo craigslist you know a furnished place so now let's talk about money let's talk about prices because your goal probably with doing something like this is going to be to do it affordably and save money and i totally get that that was my reasoning too for not wanting to move my whole life over here because that shit is expensive like i was telling you guys and i just didn't want to pay all those costs so 
sorry i'm talking about moving so much probably most of you guys that are watching this aren't even gonna be like moving you just literally want to hear about airbnb all right so the different types of places you can look for and stay in on airbnb are going to be different price points the bottom level is just going to be a shared room so it's just like if you were staying at a hostel or something like that but it's probably going to be on a smaller scale and there might not even be somebody else sharing that room with you they might just have it available for multiple people to rent but you might be the only person that ends up staying there the next level above that that's going to be a little bit more expensive most likely is going to be a private room so you would have your own room in somebody's residence i have stayed with megan in a private room and we had access to the bathroom the kitchen we had access to the whole house but the guy that lived there was staying there as well with his dog and honestly it was pretty hectic because we had two dogs and he had a dog and they didn't all get along and it was a lot but I would stay in that type of a situation again, especially if I was going to like Europe and I was staying at places every single night and really spending money on this, then I would wanna do the cheapest way possible every night. And the last one, which is gonna be the high, most high up price level, but honestly, you can still find places that are super affordable. I'm not saying this is like violently expensive, is going to be having the entire Airbnb to yourself. So the entire house, the entire apartment, the entire space to yourself. Nobody else is gonna be there. And that is what I always prefer to rent. I'm the type of person that I just I just like my own space. I want my own space. I don't want anybody else like sharing a bathroom with me if I don't know them. I just, it's just what I prefer. You know what I mean? And you definitely can find places that are affordable. So I always search for places under that filter, entire apartment, entire house. So that's gonna be like the base cost of where you're staying. Now, when you're looking for places, some top tips that I can give to you are look at places is on the map on Airbnb you can pull up either like a list of places and then side by side you can look at a map of the area like the city that you're staying and you will see all the different places that are available and where they are on the map so I really like to look at that because sometimes I'm trying to stay near a concert venue or sometimes I'm trying to stay near a very specific place and I want to be as close as possible so it's really nice that you can kind of search that on the map um, another tip I would give you guys is to really look at the reviews of places. This is something that I always do before I book any place. So definitely look at the reviews of these places that you're looking at. Now certain places, obviously people are listing their spaces on Airbnb and they might not have any reviews or they might have like one or two reviews because the space just hasn't been rented that month. It hasn't that much it hasn't been stayed at that much and I'm definitely not saying like oh don't stay somewhere with no reviews because I actually stayed I think I was the first or second person to stay at that little house before I was staying here and it ended up being great but um, I really could see a lot of photos of that place and I just knew the location was gonna be good and I think that honestly might be the only Airbnb I stayed at that didn't have any reviews maybe in the past like I try not to do that because obviously places that have a ton of reviews are gonna you can really read those and you can trust people that have stayed there so obviously just make sure you look at that stuff and then the last tip i can give you really for looking at different spaces is to add a bunch of places to a wish list so there's a really easy way on airbnb where you can i think you click this little heart um, I believe yeah, there's a little heart and it says add to wish list and you can create all different wish lists of different cities and different like trips that you may be planning and even just places that you find on Airbnb that you're like this place is so cool I would love to stay here if I ever went to this city You can just add it to a wish list so you don't forget about the place and I like to do this a lot I will just create wish lists for all sorts of trips that I'm planning and some of them might happen Some of them I might never stay there so definitely do your research and add places to your wish list and then when you're kind of booking your stuff you can really compare the different prices of places you can compare the locations and you can settle on something that is going to be best for you that's what i ended up doing last week i just booked my place for coachella and i uh compared a bunch of places i looked at the map i looked at the cost of what it was going to be for every place and i kind of settled on something that i thought would be Good. so hopefully my Coachella Airbnb is good because it was fucking expensive <laughs> something to know is that on any platform you're you're gonna have fees you're gonna have taxes and that's just kind of annoying stuff so the price that you see like oh you might find a room for $65 a night and you're like 
wow, that's really, really good for this city that I'm gonna be staying in. And then once you kind of go on and you add up everything, there's probably gonna be a cleaning fee. That's the thing with Airbnb. There's usually a cleaning fee um, because since so many people are staying in this place, it's just like if you're staying in a hotel room, they're gonna wanna clean it and change the sheets before you, the next person comes. So that's something that you kind of just have to pay for. Um, and it is annoying if you're only staying a place for like one night to pay that cleaning fee. But if you stay somewhere for like a month, there should only be one cleaning fee so there's gonna be a cleaning fee there's gonna be either a convenience or a service fee and then there's gonna be taxes based off the city that you're staying in so that's kind of the annoying stuff that you don't think about and that can add up if you're gonna be staying somewhere for two weeks three weeks a month um, so that's just stuff to be aware of and definitely look into another big tip I have if you plan on kind of going somewhere for like a long period of time like a month or two months and you're wanting to stay in Airbnbs exclusively um, I would recommend versus booking one place for an entire month um, before you've ever stayed at it or seen it you definitely can do that and you might get lucky but I would recommend booking the place you want to stay for maybe a few days or a week and kind of testing out how you like it and then if you like it then booking it for longer um, so that is something that I would recommend and sometimes it's hard because with Airbnb you might have especially if you're in a busy city or if it's kind of like a popular spot other people will book during that time as well so sometimes you might have to book a month in advance or something like that um, definitely just look at the calendar and see when it is available and I just I don't want you guys getting into the type of situation where you book something for a month or two and you're really excited about it and then you go and it might not be what you ended up hoping for or wanting most of my experiences have been really good with Airbnb I mean the pictures have always been pretty accurate and I've had pretty pretty good stays I don't think I've had any horror experiences um, I've usually really had good experiences but I think that's just because I always look at the reviews always look at the photos and um, I just kind of know how to do it now so it takes a little bit of trial and error something I would take advantage of also if you are planning on staying for a long time is asking the host if they would rent to you outside of the platform of Airbnb if you're gonna be staying there for like a month or two months. Now this is just something that might be of interest to you and I chose to do this because I was staying at the place before this for two months and after I had already been staying there for like, I'm trying to think, a week or two, so I'd already been staying there, the host already knew me, we had met in person and I had a relationship with her, like we had each other's cell phone numbers and I asked her, this was actually one of you guys' ideas and I really appreciate it. One of you guys said, hey, just so you know, like you can always ask your Airbnb host if they would rent to you outside of Airbnb like month to month. Um, and I just kind of went out on a whim and asked if they would do that because it would end up saving me money and it would probably end up saving them money too because like I said, you're gonna have those taxes, fees, cleaning fees, all of that stuff on the Airbnb platform. Now, if you rent outside of the platform, you're not gonna have that. You're just gonna have the month, you know, the rent cost. So that's something that's worth asking if you're, I'm talking so much with my hands. Um, I don't even notice when I'm doing it. I have like an obsession with doing that. That's definitely something that's worth asking your host and my lady was very happy to do it and it ended up saving me some money, which was really good because it really can add up the nightly cost. Um, there's so many different costs and there's so many different things to look into. So like I said, I if you're gonna be booking a place for like an entire month, you know, that's obviously gonna be like an expensive cost. It's gonna be like, you're paying rent to a place for a month and then you're probably gonna have you know the fees on top of that and the taxes so it definitely can be done affordably but you just kind of have to like work out some kinks and work out what you think is gonna work best so that is why I chose to ask her but like I said I had already been staying there she already knew me if I had just reached out and I had never stayed there and I had said hey will you rent to me outside of Airbnb for a month I think she would have said no so maybe can I kind of test out a place see how you like it and then if you're like okay I would want to live here for a month or maybe even two months then you can ask the host that and see what they say I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about this was a pretty long video um, I will have my link for you guys to $40 off any place you want to stay on Airbnb in the top of the description box I am always talking about Airbnb and, and I always have my link in the descriptions of my videos because it really is a platform that I believe in It is a platform that I have used for at least Two or three years. I think I've been a member since like 2014 So 
so that's a long time. Um, I am never sponsored by Airbnb. They literally have never contacted me. I think they have no idea what I do and who I am, but I promo them all the freaking time. All right, if you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, I would love you guys to thumbs up this video and also leave me a comment down below. Just let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if you have any more questions. I'm sure there's things I didn't answer that you guys might be wondering. So leave them in the comments and I really will try to get back to all of the questions that I can. And yeah, go and travel, go and stay somewhere. I seriously cannot tell you guys how important I think it is, especially, you know, while we are young and thriving to go and have adventures and experience new cities and new cultures. And something like Airbnb is a really nice way to immerse yourself because you literally are living in somebody's home or apartment. So you're like, you're living in the action of the city stay in shared rooms stay in hostels like i'm not trying to be like airbnb is the only platform it is literally just what i kind of prefer to use but there's so much out there and so many cool places that you can find and really i just that type of person that i would love to avoid having a 12 month lease <laughs> and paying all that money and moving costs if i don't have to with that being said i will be moving next month but only because i have been doing this for like four and a half months now and um, I'm ready to have my own place again. Thanks for putting up with my coffee fueled self <laughs> in this video. Um, this video was not sponsored by Trader Joe's French Vanilla Cold Brew, although I love her work. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening to all my rambles and I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye. Summertime. Sadness I feel India in my bones I can smell sunlight I can